السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد We have been discussing the interactions of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم with those who have been afflicted with some afflictions I would like to recall an incident that had been recorded in the books of hadith some of it we had discussed in our previous discussion however there are some beautiful lessons that we can draw from that but for the benefit of the viewers let's recall the incident Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed by a woman who was crying by the grave of one of her children so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, Be conscious of Allah the Almighty and practice patience. She not knowing who was speaking to her responded, Go away from me, you have not been through what I have been through. However, she did not know that she was speaking to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subsequently, the woman was told, that was the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was speaking to you. And that was the Prophet of Allah to whom you were harsh. Realizing she goes to the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and sees no guards at his door. And she says to him, O Nabi of Allah, I did not know it was you. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, Patience is at the first shock of the calamity. This is the story that I would like us to recall. Now let's look at some of the lessons. Firstly, the meaning is that patience for which an individual is commended is that which occurs at the shock of the exact moment that the calamity befalls. And not after that, because as time passes, an individual forgets what the passing of days or the passing of time. That is why it is said that everything begins small, then grows, except a calamity. For it starts out big and large, but then grows smaller with the progression of time. Scholars have said and have drawn explot, and have drawn some amazing lessons from this incident. The response of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the woman is that when she came in obedience, and in compliance after realizing that she was speaking to Rasulullah with the order that he gave her which was to fear Allah and she came apologizing for her statement which was said in a fit of sadness Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clarified to her that the due portion of this patience should be the initial stage and state because at that time, being patient is rewarded. Now, among the various lessons that scholars have taken from this incident, it shows that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's humbleness, it also shows, this incident shows, the gentleness with those who do not know. 
Rasulullah was gentle with a woman that did not know. Also, forgiving the one who has been afflicted and accepting their apology as Rasulullah did in this, on this occasion. Also, continually ordering good and forbidding evil with everyone. Also, the woman apologized. So one should apologize to virtuous people if they treated them with bad manners. Like how this woman came and apologized to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the ruler should not have a doorkeeper that prevents him from being at hand for the needs of the people as when she came. There was no doorkeeper at the door of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, someone who has been ordered with good should accept that order. Even if they do not know the one who has ordered them, anxiety and sorrow is prohibited due to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's order which commanded patience, urging one to tolerate being abused when giving advice and preaching. He was abused by this woman in a harsh terms, but he exercised patience. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah, clarified the reward of the calamity and expecting the reward for it. Qurra ibn Ayyas rahimahumullah says that Allah's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with some of his companions and some of his companions were sitting with him. And there was a man with a small son of his who came from behind his father. And so the man took the boy and set him before him. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to the man, Do you love him? The man said, O Messenger of Allah, the Almighty love you as much as I love him. Allah loves you as much as I love him. The boy then died. The man abstained from attending gatherings, remembering his son and being sad over him. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam noticed his absence and said, Why did I not see so and so? They said, O oh, Rasul of Allah, O oh, Messenger of Allah, his son whom you saw had passed away. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam met the man and asked him about his son. And he was informed that he had passed away. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam consoled the man and then said, O oh, so and so, what is more beloved to you? To live your whole life enjoying him or that in the year after there is not a door of paradise that you approach except that you find that he has preceded you there and is opening the door for you, subhanallah. The man said, oh Allah, oh Allah, rather it is more beloved to me that he precedes me to the door of Jannah and opens them for me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said to the man, then that will be for you. You will find your little child preceding you in Jannah and opening every door for you. A man said, O Messenger of Allah, for him alone or for all of us, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, No, rather for all of you who have experienced what he has experienced. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah says, If my slave is stricken with the death of a very closed loved one, and then perseveres hoping for the reward. There is no reward with me for him except Jannah. The term in this hadith, then preserve, perseveres, 
make sabr. Hoping for the reward means that the individual is patient with their loss and hopes for the reward with Allah the Almighty for that. It means to seek the reward from Allah with sincerity. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Az radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not satisfied with anything lesser than paradise. Subhanallah. Allah is not satisfied with anything lesser than paradise as a reward for the one who has been afflicted with the loss of their loved one on earth. Then is patient and seeks the reward from Allah. Allah will give him Jannah and that's the least that Allah will give him. Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, by him in whose hand is my soul. A woman who has a miscarriage will be dragged by the fetus, by its umbilical cord to Jannah. A woman who experiences miscarriage will be dragged by the fetus, by its umbilical cord into Jannah so long as she seeks reward for it by patiently persevering the affliction. Shuraih, may Allah have mercy upon him, said, when I am afflicted with a trial, I thank Allah the Almighty for it four times. I thank Allah the Almighty for it four times. I thank him for that it was not greater than it what it was. I thank him if he grants me patience in dealing with it. I thank him if he enables me to say, to Allah the Almighty we belong and to him we shall return in hope of the great reward it has. And I thank him for not making that calamity in my deen, in my religion. Subhanallah, what words of wisdom. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clarified that calamities expiate sins. Calamities expiate sins. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, the wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, There is no calamity that befalls a Muslim. There is no calamity that befalls a Muslim except that through it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, expiates some of that person's sins even if one is pricked by a thorn. An insignificant prick by a thorn, also there is reward. Umm ala. May Allah be pleased with her, says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once visited me whilst I was sick and said, Receive glad tidings, O Umm Ala. Glad tidings upon you, O Umm Ala, because through the sickness of a Muslim, Allah the Almighty does away with their sins, just as fire does away with the impurities of gold and silver. Al-Mundir, may Allah have mercy upon him, says, Umm Ala was the paternal aunt of Hakim ibn Hizam, and she was one of the women who pledged allegiance. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed that a Muslim will be rewarded for every calamity, even if it is small and insignificant, as we have just said about a thorn. Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said for every hardship, for every disease, for every worry, for every distress, for every harm, for every grief that the Muslim faces and even for every thorn that pricks them, Allah the Almighty will expiate some of their sins through it. 
Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that I entered where the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. I entered where he was and found him suffering pains of a fever. Rasulullah was experiencing fever. And I said, O messenger of Allah, you are suffering severe pains of your fever. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes, I am suffering as much as two men among you would suffer. I said to him, for that reason, will you have two rewards? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes, it will be as you said. There is not a Muslim that is afflicted with the harm of a thorn or anything above that except that because of it Allah will expiate their sins and his sins will fall like leaves fall of a tree. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam urged people that are afflicted to be patient and promised them paradise if they were patient. Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by Ammar and his family. Ammar and his family when they were being tortured in Mecca. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Alaykum bi sabr, be patient, O family of Ammar and family of Yasir. In another narration, O family of Yasir, because of your promised final abode in Jannah. Ata ibn Abi Rabah, rahimahumullah, says, Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, said to me, Should I not show you a woman from the people of Jannah? And I said, yes, show me. He said, this woman went to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, I am epileptic. And we've mentioned this incident previously. When I have episodes, my body becomes uncovered. So supplicate to Allah, the Almighty for me. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to her, if you wish, you can be patient and be guaranteed Jannah. And if you wish, I can supplicate to Allah to cure you. She said, I will be patient. However, my body becomes uncovered. So supplicate to Allah the Almighty that at least my body does not become uncovered. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam supplicated for her. This narration this incident teaches that being patient with afflictions in the worldly life makes one deserving of Jannah. Exercising patience and sabr with, afflic with afflictions in this worldly life makes one deserving of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His infinite mercy and wisdom Grant us the capacity to exercise patience when afflicted with difficulties in this world so that we may be rewarded for that in the year after with greater rewards. And may we also be able to have the correct approach of consoling people that have been afflicted with any forms of trials in the way that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did so. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته محمد نبي نبي